Hi, welcome to the yellow box of the conformable decoders. Within this lab, we make soft, conformable devices using a variety of microfabrication techniques. Let's gown up and get right into it. Through this video, we're going to demonstrate the microfabrication roadmap for a PDMS-based strain sensor. We'll introduce a number of standard fabrication technologies, including spin coating, photolithography, wet chemical etching, dry plasma etching, and transfer printing. First, we use a flat, polished silicon wafer as our base substrate. This makes a good choice for conformable devices because the substrate remains stable under different thermal and chemical conditions that will be used to process the sensor. Let's cleave the wafer to our desired form factor. We next clean the silicon wafer using acetone and IPA. We then rinse it using DI water and dry with a nitrogen air gun. Next, we spin coat a layer of PMMA as a sacrificial layer, which will be used to release our device from the rigid silicon substrate once the sensor is ready. We place the sample in the spin coater and use a sequence of variable spin speeds in order to achieve a uniform thickness. Now, let's spin coat the bottom encapsulation layer of polyamide, which will be used to protect our device. We are now ready to add our electrically active sensor element, gold. We use an electron beam metallization technique to first add a 10 nanometer layer of chromium to aid adhesion, followed by another layer of 200 nanometer of gold. Let's define the pattern of our sensor onto the substrate. To do this, we first apply a positive photoresist polymer layer followed by a soft bake. Then we perform photolithography. First, we prepare a CAD design for our sensor geometry and transfer it onto a chromium glass mask. We then insert this mask into a photolithography mask liner, which will expose our photoresist coated silicon substrate to a controlled dose of UV radiation. This exposure process selectively weakens the positive photoresist. The duration of the UV exposure is calculated from the incident light intensity and the recommended energy dose from the photoresist vendor. The PR that was exposed to the UV light is now dissolved in the developer and an exposed PR remains on the substrate. Its purpose is to protect the metal layer. Moreover, the unexposed PR will roughly define the geometry of our individual strain sensors. We then hard bake the PR to solidify the PR pattern. We then start the wet etching process to remove the unwanted gold and chromium in the exposed area and define our sensor pattern. The PR layer will protect the metal layer during the wet etch process. We're now done with using the PR layer and can strip it off from the substrate gently using an acetone swab. We then spin coat another layer of polyamide as a top encapsulation layer. We now need to pattern the PR layers and define our encapsulation geometry around our sensor pattern. For this, we employ a secondary photolithography process with a new mask. We repeat the same steps of the photolithography process, which involve spin coating the PR layer, mask alignment, UV dosing, and PR development. To etch the polyamide encapsulation layers, we use a process called reactive ion etching. In the RIE chamber, we introduce a reactive plasma to remove the polyamide regions outside of the secondary PR pattern.
Once the dry etch is completed, we can strip PR using an acetone swab. We now dissolve the PMMA sacrificial layer in hot acetone to release the device from the wafer by allowing undercutting. Next, we prepare thin PDMS sheets by pouring a pre-measured mixture into a petri dish, placing it into a vacuum desiccator to suck out bubbles and curing it with a UV chamber. We used electron beam with titanium and silicon dioxide to activate the device surface and promote better adhesion to the PDMS substrate. We use a two-step transfer printing process to mount our device onto the PDMS substrate. In the first transfer step, we apply even pressure across the surface of a thermal or cellulose tape to ensure full adhesion. Then, we carefully grasp an exposed corner of the tape with tweezers and pull it off of the silicon wafer with one swift stroke. In the second step, we transport the pattern from the tapes to the UV dosed PDMS. Yes, very good. We're ready to integrate the electric connections. Under a microscope, we carefully align the flexible ACF cable with the contact pads on the breakout PCB board and apply heat and pressure for adhesion. We then characterize the strain sensor response to a bending motion using a multimeter. Voila! Our sensor is ready! Whoa! That's so cool! Thank you for watching our fabrication journey. We hope you enjoyed.